All right, and because I'm too lazy to screen capture, there's a passion out of strings, and I'm all set up with passion out on the KU100. Because working in binaural is just easy, I do a lot of it specifically for binaural production, for which is essentially immersive sound over headphones. Um, so we're going to just play something real quick and see how that sounds. All right, so I've got my piano already set in here, and this again is a rubato performance. So it's it the tempo is pushing and pulling. It was not recorded to a click, and uh, I like that natural feel. So the goal then is to make the da the meter here line up with the performance. And so the first thing to do is to listen to the piano. Okay, so that's obviously a uh, a three four a six eight. Uh, time signatures, so you want to set that up here, and then set an initial tempo that's fairly close, uh, as I already did here at the beginning, and then rather than going through and marking tempo changes, there's this fantastic little tool here, the time warp tool, and what I do is, of course, you want the set the downbeat first, so there's the, this is essentially the action of the piano, the hammer rising up to strike the string, and then at every measure... <laughs> I'll go ahead and like here, I'll grab it and I'll drag it to where I can see the downbeat is. Same thing there. I can hear that it went off a little bit. The tempo went off a little bit there in the uh, uh, in the middle of that measure, but it doesn't matter because I'm laying in legato strings. There's nothing that's going to be glued to the, to the uh, quarter notes or eighth notes. And every time you go along, if it drifts out of a measure, grab it and line it up. There is a grace note, but I know where the actual note is. Grab it and line it up. And do that through the entire piece, and then your uh, grid will be lined up with the performance. So I've gone ahead and sketched in some uh, legato performances, and I'm just using the very first basic legato patch in violins, one and two, viola, cello, and basses. And I am... Also using the Mix 1 uh, selection of microphones. That, so everything is sort of default. Um, I've got a bit of reverb in their plug-in setup. I'll deal with that a little later. Let's uh, just see how it's sounding. This is without the piano. We'll take that click out now. Although you can see... You can see how I've used the uh, the warped grid that's warped to my piano performance to create my MIDI parts. Now, there's areas where you see things are not lined up. That's good in string arrangements. You never want things to be exact because human beings in uh, string players just don't play like that. Humans don't play like that. So let's listen again. Okay, so one thing is these guys, I can probably have that step out a little bit just to, so when you listen, it sounds like it's a little more there. A little early is okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is always interesting when a new library comes out, and that's when you catch these little bugs. For example... <laughs> Do you hear that? that? That's in the viola. I just want to fix one thing here real quick. I'm noticing an inconsistency in my arrangement where the strings all take a breath. And I want these, the celli and basses to do the same. Yeah, good, okay. 
All right, so let's go check out that that viola bug, the tuning bug. I have found this to be an issue in legato patches from Spitfire Audio uh, in chamber strings, and I'm hearing a similar problem here. Uh, let's solo this. This even. Now, the 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 note itself sounds okay. The problem appears to be within the legato, the uh, the glue, the legato articulation. Do you hear that? It kind of swings in. It doesn't when you play it dry, but when it's when it when it uh, when it slurs from the lower note up, there it's flat. And the problem with these legato articulations is that those little things that they use to glue legato notes together are not round robin. So that's why it sounds extremely artificial in the next phrase here. Coming up here. That do do. And again, do do, you know, an orchestra would never do that. So that's a problem. Uh, let's figure out a way to fix that. I think the way to do it, we know that we're on the first um, legato articulation, so I'm going to... Okay, I need to deal with that guy. So let's uh, let's pull up the instrument. Okay, so I'm going to set this... Uh, I'm going to set this here to make sure that we start from the first articulation in this instrument, the legato, and we're going to try jumping over to the sustain patch for for that note uh, which is here and in order to do that I'm going to take off these overlaps those instruct the instrument to be legato we don't need that now because we're going sustain okay and again we're sustaining here so we need to take out those overlaps Nice and in tune. Let's leave it. Yeah. And then here, uh, let's see. Let's try to go back to to that articulation there. And I'll just drag this all the way across because that way, wherever I start and stop from, the articulation will be sustained. Good. Okay, so the rest of that is fine. I did hear another couple of these elsewhere in the viola patch. Um, I'm going to send this into Spitfire. We're already talking about this one in particular. I just hope that what this really does is inspire, you know, light a fire under their uh, chair to um, go through the patch entirely, look for all sorts of, you know, work with the instruments and listen to them and find those pitchy problems. And just so you know, that bug is present in both the legato and the legato slurred articulations. They're obviously using the same uh, the same little audio artifact, uh, the audio component to glue those legato notes together, and it's obviously out of tune. Because this is just a kind of a quick and dirty flash review of a passion out of strings just using the legato patch, I just rendered them all into one combined stereo sound file. I've just put a little bit of uh, 2.5 to 1 uh, compression, a touch of EQ to bring up the bass a bit and open up the top. And uh, I mentioned in the beginning that the piano was actually a binaural recording, so when you listen on headphones, it, it should sound... Uh, a bit more realistic. But another aspect of what I love doing is working with AltaVerb. I record my own binaural impulse responses in churches and cathedrals all over Europe and Asia and, and Canada. And um, this was recorded in a church called Holy Family in Taipei. And if you listen to this, you'll hear it's a beautiful uh, reverb, a bit long though. <laughs> But isn't that nice? I love reverb. Anyway, that's probably going to be a bit wet for what we're doing. Um, but let's give it a quick listen. I mean, it sure is purdy. Nevertheless, when we add the strings in, I'm giving them the same treatment. I've only got about 25% reverb in the instruments from Spitfire just to glue it together a bit, but I want to rely mostly on the same space to make it sound like we're in the same hall. And it will also binauralize the strings a little bit because the reverb being binaural, it really does 
sound a lot more airy and over your head on earphones than typical reverb. So when the strings are in... So that's pretty swimmy. It's cool. But let's just make this, roll this back to, say, 85%. Yeah, like that. Okay, and uh, this is what it sounds like altogether. together. 